Hey everyone, today we're going to take my Frankenstein power supply that I originally threw a DPS 3012 into and we're going to give it a proper case this time and we're also going to give it a proper power supply. This coming up next. Okay, so I got the DPS 3012 out of the Frankenstein power supply. We're going to put those off to the side for the moment. We got the case it's going to go into. Now, I bought this off of Banggood, and it's a two-piece, which slides really well. It's uh, made of aluminum, and it's not like it binds at all, and it's not too loose. So, it's actually a very good construction. I'm surprised comes with the back cover, the front cover, so associated screws and nuts, the power switch, the banana plugs, four little uh, rubber standoffs for the bottom, and wires and a back fan. And I forgot it also comes with the little circuit board, which also is the controller for the fan. Okay, for the fan install, they give you four screws they give you four nuts that actually fit directly into the corners of the fan and screws right together. The switch just clips right into place. Now the circuit board matches up to the back right here. So this way you make sure in positive. So we're going to put a red banana plug on the top and a black one on the bottom. Now to do these banana plugs correctly, these have like an oblong shape. So you got to disassemble it until you get to that point, and it will fit in the special size right here. Now I'm using a 7 millimeter socket to tighten this up. And there's the outside, and there's the inside. Now before you attach the uh, power board for the fan on there, you also tap off right here, positive and negative. These two connections go to your DPS 3012 or equivalency power input. That's how it gets its power. They supply these little rinky dink 14 gauge wires, which probably would work okay considering it's 10 amps and you're only traveling maybe five or six inches each way. But I have some 10 gauge and I'm going to use some 10 gauge instead. And there we go. I got my 10 gauge. I also put some on. Um, shrink tubing right at the connection point just as added protection and there it is cut off. Now one thing we are missing on this board the fan header is supposed to be right here and here is the female side. The male side is supposed to be over here. Well it's not there and it's not anywhere in any of my stuff. So they must have forgot to pack that. How wonderful. So what we're going to end up doing is bring this over here, we'll cut it off, and they do have it labeled positive and negative, and we'll just directly solder the wires on. And there, we have it soldered directly to the board. So now let's actually install it. Now your DPS3012, at least mine does, comes already from the manufacturer with these little nylon standoffs. The kit gives you extra screws so this way you can actually mount this unit down. The way I would suggest mounting is you have these extra vents on the bottom out on the back here. I would have your fan for your MOSFETs and this will actually be the back of your unit. The front and the screen will be right here and here's your ribbon cables coming off. That's the way I would suggest mounting it. And there we go. We got the main module mounted. <clears throat> now for the front cover. Now, of course, again, you can see the beveled edges for where the screws. This is the outside of the front of the case. So we're going to put positive on top and negative on bottom. That's the way I'm going to put it. So let's go ahead and put the banana plugs on for the front. And now for the screen. The screen simply just clips right in. And here is for the output. Same deal. I doubled up on them, and they're in the right polarity. Now I got the other side stripped. They supplied these two little clamps, whatever the heck you want to call them, which would probably barely fit over their 14 gauge, and they're not insulated, they're junk. So they won't fit my 10 gauge wire anyway, so I'm going to use two of these. And 
and there's my output connections right there. So let's assemble the unit now. Now remember inside it's labeled LCD and key. And they're labeled the same over here as well. So LCD is over here. Key is over here. Okay, so now that I have the front on, I have two bottom screws on just so it holds on to the bottom piece of the frame. This has to stay loose because you need to slide this on first. And this is why I have this extra amount of line here because you need to kind of finagle its way around here. And here it is tucked. I just haven't closed up the inside of here yet. I'm just going to make sure these connectors are nice and flat. And now we can put all four screws on the back here. Okay, so apparently I'm not supposed to use these four screws that I did in the nylon standoffs. They're supposed to be two for up front, two for in the back. And I guess I got original screws when I bought the 3012. I don't have them anymore, so I'll just have to live with this for the time being until I find some better screws for it. But it is fully assembled, so now let's move on to the power supply. So here's the power supply we're going to use for this. It is a 36 volt, 400 watts, 11 amp rated power supply. And don't ask me to read that. But it does have a switch from 110 to 220 volts. And on the back of it, it has a little protective cover. And let's see if I can focus in here just a little bit more. There we go. And if I flip this back down, you can see you have three positive outputs, three negative outputs, your earth ground, your neutral, and your live wire. And you also have a voltage adjustment over here. Now the only problem with this is there's no way to turn it on and off. It's just meant to be powered, that's it. And I wanna be able to turn it on and off, preferably either from the front here, which I don't think is gonna happen, because I'm gonna open it in a minute. I think this is a heat sink. Maybe over here, I wanna put this 12 amp, 125 volt on and off switch somewhere on the case that's easily accessible because when I'm done I want to be able to take the unit itself and actually just make it all one nice little tower and I can flip on and off from the front here. So let's open up the power supply, take a quick look inside and see where we can mount this switch. Okay, we are in. That's a nice coil, torrid. Uh, let's see here. What do we got up front? There's the bridge rectifier. It'd be nice if that was heat sink, though, especially for 400 watts. And here's our switch, and of course, it switched to 220, so it switches to 110 because we are here in the States. So it looks like I can probably go on either side. My hot live and neutrals are over here, if I remember correctly. Yep, live is over here. So if I run my switch right up front here and then just run the power straight on back, that should work beautifully. So I got the switch in, perfectly fine. I had a little too much fun with my Dremel, it was jumping around, but it's in perfectly good. And we can still run the wire right on over here. So for my wire, I'm going to use just one of these cheap computer cables. It should handle it perfectly fine. So first off, let's cut off the end. Bye. Now we need to run it all the way over here, plus give myself a little bit of extra room. So I'm going to strip off the insulation right here. So green is definitely ground, white is usually hot, and black is neutral. So we're going to need to run the hot wire up here and then run another hot wire back on over to the hot side. So what I'm going to do is I am going to solder on right to there, and then I'm going to reuse the extra wire of the negative, or the uh, ne neutral that I don't need, and use that to run back actually to the live connection. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have that soldered. Of course, I'm not gonna keep the neutral wire wired into here, so let's cut that off, because we're not gonna need it. We're only gonna need enough to reach back over. Okay, that gives me my AC connection right now. Let's go ahead and put this top back on, screw it on, and then we'll test the power supply before we connect it up to our actual DC-DC converter.
Okay, so now we have the power supply closed up and the power is currently off. Let's plug it in and see if it blows up. Oh, nothing blew up. So let's put some power to it. Okay. Fan turned on barely. It is speed controlled. So there is power going to it. Let's see what we're set at. Carefully lift this up, the protector. And let's find voltage positive and voltage negative. One, two, three, one, two, three. Nope, oh, I got them reversed. We got 36.06 volts, and we can adjust this. I think I need to go get a uh, straight slot for that. So we got 36 volts right now. Let's see how much of an adjustment we got out of here. Okay, drop it down 31, 30, 28, 27. Okay, the lower limit on this power supply is about 25 and a quarter volts. Let's see what we can go up to. Forty-one. Upper limit's about 53 volts. We can go back down to 38. 37 and a half. That's good enough because the DPS 3012 can handle an input of up to 40 volts. We don't want to exceed that because then we'll blow it up, but we want it to have as much available voltage and amperage. So we'll leave it around 37.5.6 and it should be happy there. Okay, so I made the positive and negative wires that are going to run from the output of the AC to DC converter to the DC to DC converter. And we're going to be using the double split again because they give you three positive and three negatives to help branch it out. So I'll be using two of each and they will feed into a regular spade connector which will go on to the positive and negative input of the barrel jacks. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. Let's switch camera angles and give it a try. Okay, so now we have everything set up. All connected in the back. Let's turn on the power supply. I have a little green light. Now let's turn on the back of the DPS 3012. And you can hear the fan running perfectly fine. And we are ready to go. You see the input voltage is 37.9 volts and currently I'm set for 14 for 6 amps. So let's go ahead and get some super caps and try it out. Okay, so now we have the unit all set up. We're set for 14.4 volts at 12.1 amps. You can see on the super cap bank right now, we only have 1.13 volts on it. So our input voltage is still 37.9, we're really close to it. So let's go ahead and turn it on and let it charge up and see it work. Okay, so you can see we peaked out at 170 watts with no problems whatsoever. And here it is, happy as ever in its new home on my bench. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Thumbs up are always appreciated, and see you next video.